So it's a new year. It's a new opportunity to reevaluate your strategy. If you're looking to get work as an artist in 2023, the landscape's always changing. And I feel like it's a good idea at the beginning of the year to set out a roadmap, some actionable items, if you will, some things that you can do to get one step closer, just one step closer to your ultimate art goal, whatever it is in your creative field, whatever, if it's getting a job, if it's going independent, if you already got a job and you wanna quit and start your own thing, build a fan base, build a product, build a project. Let's talk about how you can get on course this year uh, because it's a great time to, to reevaluate all that. Any time is a good time to reevaluate that, but the beginning of the year is the best time because it's sort of like a fresh start. And it's so easy throughout the year to just get caught up in the what we're doing. We just keep doing what we're doing and not really evaluating, is this getting me closer to my goals? Now, there will always be fear mongers. There will always be people who will try to discourage you and convince you that there's not going to be any jobs for artists or there's no money in art, which is a total lie. It's total bull crap. It's just a lot of bitter people who can't figure it out. I know many multimillionaires that are artists. And even as technology constantly changes, you will always find artists who find a way to make a good profit from it or at least make a comfortable living. And in some cases, you know, do exceptionally well. That will always still happen. What people want is always changing and the paradigm is always shifting. And you'll hear many scared voices trying to convince you that you should stop or quit or give up or don't try. That's always happened. That's been happening to me since I started my career in high school. But not here, not on my channel. Mm -mm, we're gonna talk about strategies for your success. And before we even really get started, I want you to do something for yourself by writing in the comments below, I want you to write down what your art career goals are for 2023 as they stand right now. Giving it to text gives it power. It makes it closer to a reality for yourself. It's going to sink into your subconscious mind. You're gonna dream about it. You're gonna think about it. You're gonna strategize. The more you write it down and you formulate a strategy, the closer you're going to get to that goal. So write it down in the comments below this video. And you can write down whatever you want for yourself, man. There is no judgment and no limit. At least give yourself some goal, some direction. You know, if that's getting a job at a game studio, uh, then your, your priorities are gonna be different than if your goal is to build an audience, for example. If you wanna go independent, you have to build an audience. That means focusing on things like Instagram and ArtStation and uh, building a, a, a community around your art. And that's gonna be very different than your goals if you're trying to find employment at a game studio. So let's start there. And if you wanna go more independent, you can skip ahead to that section, but let's start with getting employment at a game studio. Where do you begin? If you're trying to find employment at a game studio, your job every day from nine to five is to fix your portfolio. Constantly, every day, evaluating your portfolio. Look through there. If there's anything in your current portfolio that looks janky or unprofessional or inconsistent, uh, then get rid of it. Even if the rest of your portfolio is just baller, you know, one bad image in there that doesn't look like you know what you're doing can really sour the whole portfolio and you could lose the gig just because of that one bad, bad page in your portfolio. This is the kind of thing that helps if you have a community and other friends who are trying to get jobs at game studios or in animation or whatever, and ask them, you know, look through my portfolio. What looks bad? Like what, what, what would you do differently here? Don't hinge on one person's feedback and don't do what everybody else says. But if you get enough people saying, hey, this one page does, isn't your strongest, then that's a good place to start. And I would weigh the opinion of working professionals over people who have no idea about the craft as well. And every week, this is your job until you find a job, is to go through your portfolio, look for the pain points, look for the weak spots, constantly evaluate what should be in a good looking portfolio, look up existing concept artists that work at the studios you're applying to, see if they have tutorials or workshops, and if they don't, just look at their portfolio and compare your stuff directly to theirs, because you are in a competition. Your portfolio should probably be like 10 to 15 really great pages of good designs. And with every page, you should be asking yourself, what does this page in my portfolio show that I can do for the client? If you find a page that doesn't have any representation or any purpose, it doesn't show that you can do characters. It doesn't show that you can do unique skins or unique environments or cutaways or any purpose at all. Cut it rework it. If you really want to be working at a game studio that makes a mech game, then make sure that your portfolio contains mech designs. 
that sort of a thing. And it's okay to have multiple portfolios at any given time throughout my entire career when I was actually actively looking for work, I would constantly have a, uh, a portfolio for the different types of projects that I would have worked on. So a portfolio for Blizzard would look very different than a portfolio for Valve, which would look very different than a portfolio for Fortnite or Overwatch. Ask yourself, does this page, does this image look like it's selling that I can work at that company on their games? And the same is true if you're trying to get work as an animator. An animator's portfolio should look a million times different than a concept artist for video games portfolio. If you need a nudge in the right direction, you can't pinpoint what the problems in your portfolio might be, check out my portfolio workshop over on my Gumroad. Now let's say that you're already working as an artist, maybe you're doing contract work, maybe you're in-house employed, and you're thinking, man, I really just wanna go independent. I'm tired of having bosses. I'm sick of the dream. I want my own dream. I got bigger dreams now. I'm ready to do something more independent. Uh, then you gotta build an audience. And the best thing to do with, with that is to start on a strategy and actually write out a little game plan for yourself for the year. You don't have to have a timeline. You don't even have to stick with it, but at least be mindful of what your plan is. If you wanna avoid social media altogether, don't try to build an audience. It's an essential part of that business. And that plan should probably be built around notes that you take from other successful people who have done what it is that you're trying to do. What's your social media strategy? How often are you posting? What kind of content are you posting? Are you posting consistent stuff? What's something that you can get multiple functions out of? For example, doing some contract work allows you to post that artwork online. Doing uh, some other types of contract work the client does not want you to post that work online. Uh, are there contracts that you could take that would you could get double function out of, so to speak? Uh, and for example, you know, I, I paint Hearthstone cards. You know what else I do with that art? I also get to use the artwork on my YouTube channel. This is something that that particular client is totally cool with and they don't have any problems with it. They also allow you to sell prints. Maybe that's something that you could consider as a side gig is maybe talk to the clients that you're working with. If it's the type of clients that, that allow you to do such a thing, then maybe you could make prints and plan out a schedule to go to different comic cons. I had a friend of mine who did Hearthstone cards and he painted his Hearthstone cards on oil canvas and he was able to sell his originals to collectors. And he ended up making way more money from selling the originals to collectors than what he was getting paid from Blizzard. And I had another friend of mine who did uh, trading cards for a different card game and he would sell prints at conventions and he ended up making more money from selling the prints at conventions than what he got from actually doing the paintings for the client. And so it was, it was kind of a threefold thing because it was also promotional material for that particular artist. It was a way to get paid to show off and, get, and then also get the opportunity to be able to make these images that they could then sell in other collections and, and in other uh, avenues. If you own the rights to it or your, your contracts allow you to do so with the artwork that you create, consider that you could apply your artwork onto things like t-shirts, apparel, you could maybe uh, delve slightly into some fashion design even potentially. I mean, there will always be a million and one ways that artists can make a living. And I have done dozens of videos about many, many ideas, throwing out many possible ideas that you could, you could build a business around your art on the side while simultaneously making them, them uh, bills from doing some client work or working in house or whatever it is that you're doing. Now you have to check with your, your contract because if you're working for a company that doesn't allow you to do any side work of any kind, you may have to consider changing your job or leaving or going to a different company that maybe even pays less, maybe uh, building some relationships with contractors. If you're working some kind of a job and you're looking for a way to go more independent, you probably want to avoid contract work. You want to start actually trying to put more of your time into building your own products and learning how to market them and do that on the side until you get a grasp of it. And that might take you a year or, or longer to figure out how do I market the kind of thing that I'm making and is there an, even an audience for it? A good way to do that is to do some marketing research about marketing yourself and what it, what it means to create content that you don't have to sell because people want it from you. The best kind of marketing is the one that people already want and you don't even have to do any work. You just have to provide what it is that they already want. So you're not convincing them of anything. You're just kind of going, hey, that thing you want is right over here. And then finding those people and then leading them to you. 
it may also be a good time to evaluate is, is the thing that I'm doing getting me the results that I want? Perhaps every day you're posting on Instagram and you keep posting and you're posting and it's not really getting you attention on your work. It's not really growing. And, and maybe it's a good time to evaluate, do I need to be creating more content more rapidly? Do I need to be changing the way I'm presenting my content? Maybe looking around at other people who are doing something similar to what it is that you want to do and asking yourself, well, one, what are they getting out of it? Is that what I want out of it? Is it a job? Is it money? Is it uh, just more attention on my, on my social media? Is there some way that they are presenting their work, these successful people that are doing it well, is there some way that they're presenting their work that possibly I can adopt into what it is that I'm doing? And am I willing to do that amount of work to get there? And then furthermore, once I get there, is that what I really even want? Be cautious to not be seduced by the popularity contest because just being popular on social media doesn't mean more jobs for you. There are a lot of really popular artists on Instagram that are completely unemployable. My point is we should be always looking at the trajectory, especially at the beginning of every year, look at the trajectory of what it is that you're currently doing and ask yourself, where does this lead to? Is this gonna lead to a place where I actually wanna be? If you're working with a client right now and you don't really see any real future with them, it doesn't really seem like it's going to grow, then maybe this is the time to evaluate. Should I be looking elsewhere? Should I be looking for a uh, career path that's more suitable for me? Do I even really want to stay in the industry that I'm in? Or do I want to start studying another industry? If you're working in animation and you want to work in games or vice versa, or you just want to go independent, don't just float down the river or wherever you're headed. I mean, really try to make some decisions about where you want to go because you might win the lottery, but most people don't. Okay. So if you want to increase your chances, you have to be mindful of the actions you're taking right now and asking yourself if this is bringing me closer to my ultimate goals. If it's not, what can I do to course correct? Can I write out a plan? Can I strategize a little bit more effectively to get back on course? Did I stray too far because the pay doing this other thing was too good? I recently had to do that. I was working a very profitable job working on contracts. I had a huge team. We were doing contracts for big game development studios. And I decided, you know what? I kind of got sidetracked from making my own games. So I left a lot of that work behind. And now we're mostly just focused on developing the Twilight Monk game. And that is our own project. That's something that I'm creating from the ground up. I had to lower my cost of living. I was considering moving to the countryside, which I would encourage you to do if you want to build your own business. Move to the countryside, lower your bills, get all your expenses down really low so that it's stable and sustainable. Do just enough contract work to pay those bills or find a way to get that, uh, you know, two days a week that I work on the thing that pays my bills. So the rest of the week, I can just work on the big goal, the thing that really brings me great joy. And the irony of doing that is that suddenly, uh, after I had announced it and put it on Steam, suddenly I had like several dozen uh, publishers reaching out to me, offering me anything I wanted until I settled on the one that just gave us everything I wanted. <laughs> and I'll have some news about that soon. But my point is every year I do this and last year it paid off big time. I changed my course, my trajectory to something that was more fulfilling to me in my life. And I don't want to say that yours should be, your goals should be anything like what mine are. But I can tell you, I'm happier every year with myself, um, even though sometimes you have to go without some things that you thought you wanted. You sacrifice a few short-term uh, things so that you can get uh, closer to the bigger win, I guess you'd say. Sometimes you're smacking away a really amazing gig because it's not where you really wanted to be going. And you realize, I've just been doing that for the last few years because it was the thing that was working, but it isn't really what I want out of my life. And this is a good time at the beginning of the year to be really asking those big, difficult questions. And the last thing I want to say is, you know, if you're happy with where you're at and what you're doing and you like the trajectory you're on, man, don't change anything. Just find maybe some moments to verbalize your appreciation for the things that you've got. You know, the beginning of the year isn't always have to be like New Year's resolutions. Oh, I got to change this. I got to improve that. Well, it's good to have goals, but also be grateful for where you are. You know, if you have great health, I mean, you know, the whole world just went through a thing, man. <laughs> uh, if you've come out the other side, there's something to be grateful for. I also believe that it is the single most greatest time in history to be a creative and to be alive and to have your health 
right now is the best time in the universe historically ever to, to be alive and to be in the creative field. You can accomplish anything. And with all the technology that are at your fingertips, if you're listening to this video, you have the same tools that anybody else has. And maybe take a moment to look at your old art and appreciate the lessons that you've learned and how you've grown and improved over the last year and write those down. I found that by verbalizing your gratitude for things, you find that you turn your perspective on every situation, even those challenges that you face to be something to be grateful for because they brought you to where you are now. This is my philosophy and it's something that I hope that it can help you. And I certainly wish you all the greatest success in the world as I always do. It's an unlimited supply out there. And so I want to say if you didn't write anything down because you didn't have any goals this year, maybe write down something below the video that you're grateful for this year. Okay. If you have goals in concept art, in video games, I have a ton of workshops and tutorials over on my Gumroad channel. Those workshops range from the absolute beginner, learning to draw from zero to learn to draw within 20 days. I have that workshop and the easy art lessons. And I've also got my more advanced concept art focused workshops that will teach you the processes, the same processes that myself and my team use to work on the world's biggest video games. So I'm here every week with new videos. If you have any comments or questions, leave those below. And I only read the ones from uh, subscribers. So don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next week. All right, ciao.